Hello and welcome to lesson 7-3 over similar triangles. Our video notes will go kind of quickly so make sure you are pausing if you need extra time to copy anything down and make sure you go back and replay anything you might have missed. So let's begin. There's not a whole lot of vocab and so we're going to jump right into it. Let's look at our objectives. Uh, previously we've used angle angle side, side side side, and side angle side congruence theorems to prove the triangles are congruent. Well now we can use similar, uh, no pun intended, similar statements to show that triangles are similar. We're going to use the angle angle similarity postulate and side 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 and side angle side similarity theorems to prove that triangles are similar or verify that they're similar. We're also going to use similar triangles to solve problems. So let's take a look at that first one. First off we have our angle angle similarity postulate. Now I'll tell you when I was in geometry when I was in high school we called it angle 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 and the reason that we just now call it angle angle is because we don't need that third pair of angles. If any two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another, we know the third pair of angles are congruent. So all we have to verify are these two pairs of congruent angles. But if that's the case, if any two triangles of one triangle are congruent to any two of another, then the triangles are similar. Okay, so that's what we've shown there. So we can use that to verify whether or not given triangles are in fact similar or not. So in example 1A, we have angle B, which is 42, and we have angle D, which is 42. Angle C, which is 58, and then they mark angle E, which is 80. And you might think, well, 58 doesn't equal 80, so these are not similar triangles. But hold on just a second. What I would like for you to check for first, look at these other pairs of angles. If these angles are 42 and 58, 42 plus 58 equals 100 degrees. Since these two add up to 100, the other angle must be 80 degrees. That angle is congruent to angle E. Since angle B and D are congruent, and angle A and angle E are congruent, both measuring 80 degrees, triangle ABC is similar to triangle E, got to get the order correct, E, D, F, by angle, angle, similarity. All right, let's move on to part B. Now, they don't give you a whole lot of information here, but these arrows are extremely important. Okay, they tell you that these segments are parallel. That creates alternate interior angles that are congruent at P and M, but also at Q and N. Okay. By the alternate interior angles theorem, angle Q is congruent to angle N and angle P is congruent to angle M, so triangle QPX is similar to triangle NMX by angle-angle similarity. All right, then we have two other theorems that will allow us to show that triangles are similar, and that's side-side-side theorem and side-angle-side theorem. Side-side-side similarity, and we do want to specify similarity because we also have side-side-side congruence back from our chapter on congruent triangles. But side-side-side similarity says if the corresponding side lengths of two triangles are proportional, then the triangles are similar. So let's say we had the ratio of LJ to QM, if that was the same ratio as the ratio of KL to PQ, and those were all the same ratio as JK to MP, if all three of those ratios are the same, then these triangles are similar. Not if they're congruent segments, but if they're proportional segments, then they're similar. And then our last one here is side angle side, and that says if two lengths of our sides 
are proportional to two other lengths of our sides. And if the included angles are congruent, then the triangles are similar by side angle side. Side angle side similarity. So let's figure out which one of these allow us to say these triangles are similar. So here's what we have. Now we don't have any angle measures given, but we do know vertical angles are congruent. We don't know that these sides are necessarily parallel, so we don't want to use alternate interior angles here. But since the vertical angles are congruent, I could use that. But they give me all three sides of one and all three sides of another. So let's see if we can use side, side, side to set up the proportions here. Now, these sides we know would have to go together, 9 to 6. Let's use that as our starting ratio, AB to DE is 9 to 6, and let's reduce that to 3 over 2. Let's see if we can compare that to the other segments. Now, we could compare side AC to EC or to DC. Now, it looks more like we should compare it to DC because they're both on top. So let's compare AC to DC. That ratio is 6 to 4. If you reduce that, that is also 3 over 2. And lastly, we should compare BC to EC, which would be 7.5 over 5. Now that one takes a little bit more to reduce, so you would want to um, handle this a little bit differently. Maybe multiply both parts by 2. That would give you 15 over 10 to get rid of that decimal. 15 over 10 also reduces to 3 over 2. So since all three of these ratios are 3 over 2, we can say that triangle ABC is similar triangle DC, sorry, DEC by side, side, side similarity. All right, we're going to skip over part B for the sake of time. We'll come back and do this one in class. Um, we're going to skip over that one, but we will come back to it in class and maybe put a star by it, something to help you remember to come back to it during class. All right, we have properties of similar triangles. The way we have uh, properties of um, equality or congruence, we have our reflexive property of similarity, and that's just any figure is similar to itself. All right, we have symmetric property of similarity, which says if ABC is similar to DEF, then if you turn it around, DEF is similar to ABC. And the transitive property of similarity also is true. If ABC is similar to DEF and DEF is similar to XYZ, then ABC is similar to XYZ. Okay, and so some of those properties might come in handy later. Let's move on to part three, or example three, where we actually use similarity of triangles to solve problems. So here's what we're given: we are given parallel segments. And that's going to tell you alternate interior angles are congruent. So you can go ahead and mark those if you would like. Okay that gives us angle-angle similarity of the triangles right away. So right away I know triangles are similar without reading any of the rest of the problems. So these triangles are similar by angle-angle similarity. So I should be able to set up a proportion of their side lengths to find the value of x, therefore being able to find RQ and QT. So I'm going to compare both segments here to this 10 to 4 ratio. The corresponding sides should be 10 to 4. Okay, if you want to reduce that, you can make that 5 over 2, and we're going to set our other proportion equal. So the corresponding side of triangle UTQ to 2x plus 10 is this x plus 3 RQ. So 5 over 2 should be the same as 2x plus 10 over x plus 3. Okay, we should be getting pretty good at solving proportions now. This is the proportion you want to solve, cross multiply, but when you do that, you have to remember that you're really doing this. Okay, the cross products are equal, but you're distributing 5 to the x and 5 to the 3, and 2 to the 2x and 2 to the 10. So why don't you take some time, pause the video, and solve this equation for x. All right, if you need any more time, again, pause the video, but we are ready to look at our answer, and here's what we should get. x equals 5. Now, to find our q and QT, we just need to plug that back in. So RQ is X plus 3, which is 5 plus 3 now, which is 8. And QT is 2 times 5 plus 10, which is 
10 plus 10, or 20? Those are your answers for RQ and QT. All right, let's continue with our next example. Um, this is a problem very similar to what we just had. We have parallel lines, so we know our alternate interior angles are congruent. So go ahead and mark those. That makes the triangle similar. So we're going to set this up in exactly the same way that we just did so that we can find the value of x and plug it back in, in this case, to find AC. So why don't you try this one on your own? Pause the video so you have enough time to do this, but you can follow the example that we just did in 3 to set this up. Start with your similarity ratio or scale factor 11 to 38.5 and set up your other proportion with these expressions. Solve for x. Okay, if you need more time, pause the video. Otherwise, this is what we should have. All right, when we set up our proportion, 11 over 38.5 equals x plus 2 over 3x plus 8. So when we cross multiply, we get 30x, 33x plus 88 equals 38.5x plus 77. And you solve that for x, we should get x equals 2. That means we take 2 and we plug it in for x here. 3 times 2 plus 8, that's 6 plus 8. So ac equals 14. All right, let's take a look at our final example here. We have a situation where Josh wanted to measure the height of the Sears Tower in Chicago. He used a 12-foot light pole and measured its shadow at 1 p.m. The length of the shadow was 2 feet. Then he measured the length of the Sears Tower's shadow, and it was 242 feet at the same time, at 1 p.m. What is the height of the Sears Tower? This is an example of indirect measurement, so we're going to actually make a quick sketch of the situation. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and make my sketch, and then I'll continue recording and you can pause the video once you see it to copy it down. All right, here's my sketch of the situation. You have the 12 foot light pole and then we have our two foot shadow. That makes a right triangle if you imagine connecting the top of the light pole to the end of the shadow. And then the Sears Tower would also cast a shadow which is measured at 242 feet and we're looking for the height of that Sears Tower and so that forms another right triangle and if these measurements are taken at the same time of day these should be similar triangles. All right. And so what we're going to do is use that similarity to set up a proportion of 2 feet to 12 feet for the shadow length to the actual height of the pole. And that should be equal to our shadow length, 242 for the Sears Tower to the height of the Sears Tower. And once again, all we have to do here is cross multiply. So 2h equals 2,904 and divide by 2. And the height of the Sears Tower in feet is 1,452 feet using similar triangles created by an object and its shadow. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look here at this last idea here you'll find in your notes. Um, no examples to do, but I do want you to follow along with me here. In triangle similarity, we're summarizing, we could have angle-angle similarity if we can show two angles of one are congruent to two angles of another. We could have side-side-side similarity if I can show that all three sides and their corresponding sides in the other triangle are proportional. Okay, Or I could use two sides of one triangle and their corresponding sides in the other triangle. and their included angles are congruent. So we have angle-angle similarity, side-side-side similarity, or side-angle-side similarity. And then once we know the triangles are similar, we can use proportions to find measurements.